Picture this. You're standing before a marble palace, pale and regal, set against the obsidian backdrop of the underworld. In the midst of it all, there's Persephone, a figure both enchanting and enigmatic. Seated beside her is Hades, the ruler of this mysterious realm, a god of the underworld and of the dead. Now, let's shift our focus to the woman in front of them, Psyche, a nymph as delicate as moonlight. Her mission, handed down by the goddess of love, Aphrodite, is far from ordinary. A task to capture the essence of Persephone's beauty as punishment for her secret love affair with Eros. Persephone, with a sly grin, obliges Psyche's request, slowly pouring the essence of beauty into a chest. In a hushed tone she whispers, but remember my dear, never open it. If you know anything about little ancient Greek girls in boxes, I'm sure you can guess how this is going to end. When Psyche opened the box, a dark cloud swirled around her putting her into a seemingly eternal slumber. However, our journey isn't about Psyche's romantic adventures. No, our spotlight is on the king of the underworld. This is the story of his queen, Persephone, the terrifying. Was it a case of Stockholm Syndrome? Or was it a complex forbidden love still misunderstood today? To uncover this epic narrative, let's turn back the clock to Persephone's youth. So our story kicks off with Persephone, or as she was known back in the day, Kore, the maiden. She was your typical goddess of springtime, frolicking in sunlit meadows. Her innocent wanderlust often got her into a bit of trouble. And then there's her mom Demeter, who was a bit of a constant presence, let's say she was, uh, extra protective, like the OG helicopter mom. And when you see what's about to happen to Persephone, you'll get why. She kept Persephone hidden away, ensuring her perpetual virginity, all without really asking for Persephone's input. Now, Persephone's beauty, off the charts, rivaling even Aphrodite's. But then, enter Hades. He was the god of the underworld. And let's be honest, he didn't really get out much. But when he did, boy, did he make it count. One day, he's cruising around and bam, there's Persephone amidst the flowers and sunlight, a vivid contrast to his usual subterranean world. Hades had an annoying younger brother, Zeus, king of the gods, who also happened to be Persephone's father. Zeus, who had a bit of a reputation for you know, wasn't exactly father of the year material. Sure, he had a thing for Demeter's hair, but he wasn't exactly a fan of her being all motherly. Now, Zeus and Hades, complicated history there. It all goes back to when they were divvying up the Earth's real estate after that Titanomachy gig. Zeus got the sky and Mount Olympus. Poseidon got the sea and all the fish, I guess and Hades. Well, he got the gloomy depths of the underworld, filled with dead souls and gemstones. Not a bad deal once he warmed up to it. Now, Zeus realized that thanks to Demeter's strict no-dating policy, Persephone was off the market, and that didn't sit well with him. Zeus, the ultimate ladies' man, had a bright idea. Why not tell Hades to just kidnap his daughter? Because in Greek myths, apparently, abductions were like the original swipe right. So, there's Persephone in her prime dating years plucking a beautiful Narcissus flower, and then bam, ground cracks open, out roars Hades in his chariot with those four ominous black stallions, and he whisks Corey away to the underworld faster than you can say speed dating. Persephone. Yeah, she wasn't exactly thrilled. I mean, who would be, right? Hades, a complete stranger, tries to comfort her. Meanwhile, Demeter is out there, tearing through the mortal realm like a force of nature, desperately searching for her missing daughter. Nine days and nights, she goes at it, determined to find her beloved daughter. Let's just say Demeter didn't have money, but she sure had a very particular set of skills. In the quest to find her daughter, she goes to a party hosted by King Kellius. She's sipping on her drink, enjoying the party, when, oops, his son Abbas makes a rather unfortunate comment about her drinking habits. So she turned him into a lizard. Talk about a major scale down in life. To make up for this upset, Demeter decided to become a nurse for Kellius's other son, Demophoon. And here's where things get a bit heated. She tries to make the boy immortal. But let's just say things don't go as planned, and it turns into a fiery situation. Literally. As Demeter is dealing with her own emotional roller coaster, she decides to take things into her own hands. Well, more like humanity's stomachs. She puts a hold on things growing and seeds sprouting until she gets Persephone back. Zeus couldn't let this happen. If all the mortal women starve, he'll have no one left to, um, interact with. 
So, he steps in and has a little chat with Demeter, convincing her to reconsider her actions before they unintentionally spark an ancient Greek famine. And then, there's Hades, the god of the underworld, secretly hoping that Persephone would eventually fall for him. So, he devises a plan, and what's his weapon of choice? A pomegranate, Persephone, who had been on a food strike until this point, reluctantly takes a bite of that tempting pomegranate. And just like that, she's bound to the underworld forever. Hades felt great guilt, and eventually decided that Persephone could go back to her mother as long as she came back to him for one-third of the year, every year. During the months she was gone, Demeter yet again promised to halt the growing of leaves and fruit. And that is who we have to thank for winter. Surprisingly, Persephone found the underworld wasn't as bad as she was expecting. Hades, sweet talker that he is, models their palace after Mount Olympus and even plants beautiful orchards. Now, let's talk about the ill-conceived adventure of Theseus and his lecherous friend, Pirithus. They thought it'd be a great idea to kidnap Persephone. But Hades had other plans, and Theseus barely escaped with his life. As for Pirithus, well, let's just say he's got a rather permanent chair in the underworld. In this tale, Hades takes on the role of Persephone's protector a god who's willing to go to great lengths to keep his queen safe. Now, as Persephone settled into her role as the queen of the underworld, something remarkable happened. She wasn't just ruling with an iron scepter, but her heart too, extended its reach, even to the mortal realm. One story in particular, tugged at her heartstrings, the tale of Admetus and Alcestis. Picture this. Admetus, a mortal king, gets a shot at a second lease on life, but there's a catch. He needs someone to step up and willingly give their life, so he can keep on living. Enter Alcestis, his devoted wife, who, without knowing the full extent of what she was signing up for, courageously sacrifices herself to save her husband. It's a tale of love, sacrifice, and a spineless husband's secret guilt. Persephone, in all her kindness, felt a profound sympathy for Alcestis, who had made the ultimate sacrifice out of love and trust. So, our queen of the underworld decided to give Alcestis a second shot at life, letting her return to the mortal world. This heartwarming story showed the power and freedom that Persephone had in the underworld. Being the main actor in this part of the myth, able to release souls alongside her partner Hades. But enough about that, let's zoom back to our friend Psyche. She's the one who had the not-so-great luck of opening that cursed box. Now, it's highly likely that Persephone didn't actually intend for it to harm Psyche. She had someone else in mind, a certain goddess green with envy. Yep, we're talking about Aphrodite, the ultimate queen of drama and jealousy. Aphrodite always had a grudge against Persephone for her radiant charm, and she saw an opportunity here. So, she gave Psyche a mission, nab that box of beauty from Persephone, with the hope that something bad would happen to our curious nymph. But wait, here comes the plot twist. Eros, the god of love and Aphrodite's own son, swoops in to save the day. He revives Psyche from her deep slumber because, well, love has a funny way of conquering even divine mischief. Now, let's shift the spotlight back to our goth power couple of the Greek pantheon, Hades and Persephone. Surprisingly, their relationship was like a lighthouse in a sea of divine affairs. Despite their rather unconventional beginning, abduction and all, which, to be honest, was a bit like ancient Greek culture's version of modern-day courtship, Hades treated Persephone with kindness and respect. And she, well, she reciprocated in kind. It was a balanced partnership, a real unicorn in Greek mythology. Plus, she found her true calling, helping souls navigate the afterlife. Now, let's unveil the true villains in this story. Aphrodite, the envious and vain goddess, and Zeus, the neglectful father more concerned with power than the safety of his daughter or the feelings of her mother. Talk about a dysfunctional divine family, right? 